Welcome to the show. I'm Kathy Ireland. Everybody needs socks, but function can sometimes outweigh style. One brand is evening things up with a line of footwear that's as fun to look at as it is to wear. Today, we're joined by Kelly Baugh, CEO and president of Four Bare Feet to discuss how her family's successful brand grew from a single mother knitting socks to becoming a leading manufacturer and retailer of licensed and novelty socks. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you so much, Kathy. It's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, well, Kelly, can you please tell us what Four Bare Feet is all about? Yeah, absolutely. Four Bare Feet is about a sock company that allows people to express their passion. And we're licensed with the NFL, NBA, NHL, colleges, Hershey's, Wrangler, and several other iconic brands that we take those logos and make them into designs on socks, as well as our own collection of designs, and it allows people to express their passion. Oh, I love it. And can you talk about some more of your unique and fun designs? Absolutely. Some of the designs that we work with and do, you know, like for instance, the NFL. Mm -hmm. So we take the team logos and create different designs and graphics, fashion designs, and put them on the socks. And then we also take NFL players. And I'm sure you've seen the images of NFL players on socks. So we do that. It's really fun to see um, when the players actually see their image on the socks. And it, it's a really cute thing to see. Kids love it. And then you know, like Hershey's and pineapples and all different kinds of designs that are just so flavorful and fun. And Kelly, Four Bare Feet has a, a very moving original story. Can you please walk us through the, the history of this company, how it got yeah. started? Yeah. My mom, Sharon Rivenbark, started the company back in 1984. My brother, Tim, at the time, um, he just turned 16 and was diagnosed with a rare brain tumor called tuberous sclerosis. And so they told my mom that he would end up mentally retarded and he would lose his ability for short term memory. So they wanted her to have him stuff envelopes or basket weave 10 minutes a day. My brother had an IQ of over 150. He was a genius, varsity tennis, varsity track. And she obviously did not want to tell him that. So she was a school teacher. And instead, um, we lived in a resort, tiny little resort town in Brown County, Indiana. And she decided to open a 10 by 15 retail store. And she found an old antique banner knitting machine, sock machine out of the Carolinas, brought it up. And Tim was a genius. So he was able to run the machine and make socks. And we started making socks. So together we worked, Tim worked, you know, and after school weekends and mom helped. And, you know, I always helped, of course. And it grew from there. Wow, what an amazing story. What did Four Bare Feet, what did it look like in those early years? Oh my gosh, controlled chaos. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, socks everywhere. We had socks in the living room, shelves that we built in the living room, socks at the end of my bed. I would kick them over in the middle of the night and wake up every day for school and have to pick up all the socks. They were even in the oven, believe it or not. <laughs> so any place you could stick a box of socks, we had storage in the house and then we grew from there and um, then outgrew that facility and then rented another place and outgrew that and just continued with the growth. Well, Kelly, let's talk about the evolution of the brand. What were some of your first designs like? Oh, they were very basic. So back then, I mean, the technology just wasn't there. So like little teddy bear designs and like little apples and really cute novel designs. Mm -hmm. um, if it was a basic, simple graphic, we were able to do it. And then as things progress, technology obviously has evolved. And now we can do really graphically oriented, pretty unique works of art on socks. And Kelly, Four Bare Feet has actually grown from a small family enterprise to a company with NFL licensing. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, super exciting. And we, when we were starting in the business, we did our own collections of socks. And so they're easily stolen, taken, copied. And so when we did the colleges, we found that people couldn't do that. So then we expanded into NFL, NHL, NBA, et cetera. And in doing so, Kind of a, an interesting story is um, the NFL actually, you could back then sell to the actual team. Even though you couldn't sell other retailers with NFL, you had to be licensed. So I had called on Bill Priakis at the Dallas Cowboys and he was the buyer at that time and then became president of Dallas Cowboys merchandising. 
And he actually gave us our first order for an NFL team and then helped mentor me and help us get our NFL license, which was phenomenal. And then one of the big things was JCPenney, simply for sports back then. So to become a vendor of JCPenney was just a phenomenal thing. And when I wasn't even old enough to rent a car, I went down and called on them and we got our vendor number and then they also helped us get our license. So it was such a partnership and people that help you in the industry and it's just amazing with all the support that you get. Oh, congratulations on that. Thank you. And Kelly, understanding that charity and environmental awareness and social consciousness is very important to you. How have these initiatives really helped shape the brand? With our background and with my brother, charity has always been paramount and you know of high importance to us. So with the Sox, every year we always pick um, different charities and organizations that we support. So um, there's the veterans and homeless shelters within the school corporations around us, all the counties. We give six pairs of socks to every child on the needs list. And then this year, super exciting, we are doing a charity in conjunction and collaboration with the NFLPA and NFL players. So it's called 32. So it's 32 teams, 32 socks, and one player from each team is working in collaboration and designing a sock for their charity. So the sock will go up on auction, so it's online, and you can bid and win that sock, and then 100% of the money goes to the charity of the player's choice. So it's really inspirational to see what some of the players do on their off time and how they are just such icons, not only out on the field, but in the community as well. Well, my high school was very uh, low funded when, uh, when it comes to the football program. And a lot of guys are not able to play. A lot of guys are not able to get cleats. A lot of guys are not able to, you know, get the equipment they need to be successful on the field. And when that happens, given those guys situation, that also leads them not to be successful in the classroom either. Because I know for me personally, playing football in high school actually helped me focus in the classroom more because I wanted to play and I wanted to be on the team. I wanted to be a part of something great. Whether we want or lose, you know, I just wanted to be a part of something, something bigger than me. And that, that pushed me to be better in the classroom, but that also starts with the funding. No kid wants to be on the field with no cleats and no kid wants to be on the field and they can't have a jersey. So that's what I feel like this is really important. 27 is actually the, the number I wore in college the last two years of my career there. And black and red, so we actually switched colors. So not not really switched colors, but I feel like they added more black to the color scheme. As you know, we I started getting in my later years and I always loved the black and red combination. But yeah, so that's, that's the reason why I did it. And the actual name is 27 Savage. And Savage is more so a mentality you know, you gotta have when you take the field, and especially the position I play, like it's, it's a man's game in there. You, you, you can't just do it just to do it. You, you really have to have something to you to play that position. So that's kind of how I came up with this design. So that and it looks really, really mean. Like I, I, really, I really like it. I really like it. Kelly, you actually have an eco line too, is that right? We do, yeah. A sustainability program is really critical, especially in today's environment. So um, we manufacture a lot of our socks with recycled products as well as um, bamboo, recycled cotton, and various other items. And then also within that, having a program, we're members of the Fair Labor Association and Ecovatis, as well as ESEP. So we audit throughout all of our factories and human rights are so critical and so important. So we make sure that everything is audited and we work with the colleges to ensure that all of those measures are, are there and in place and that we uphold the highest standards. Kelly, is the brand offering any new products in addition to its line of socks? Absolutely, always. So we're so excited. We have a new program called Dynamic and that's the program we're actually launching with the NFL players so that we can actually take socks and do any design and then we can even do as little as one pair. So it really offers an opportunity to do like bulk production as well as customization so that I could actually do modern living socks and get you up Love it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're also doing another product line called Bug Armor, which is really exciting because it actually repels insects. So ticks like Lyme disease, fleas, chiggers, any kind of insect. Right. So it lasts up to 100 washings and repels insects. They're amazing, use them myself because anytime I travel and go out in the woods without them, I regret it because um, they really work. And we're also launching that into other products like blankets and beanies and you know various other items that it would make sense to have protective gear. Oh, wow. 
Wow, that's awesome. And before the show, Kelly, you shared some of the personal hurdles your family has been through since the company's inception. But one thing holds true, that you persevered. So where do you gain your inspiration? I would have to say family. Family and our work family, our team at Four Bare Feet. When you have a phenomenal team behind you, then you don't want to let them down. You always excel and you work harder to make sure that you don't disappoint. And they also support you and give you that confidence to go out and get it done. Um, as well as anybody that ever says that you can't do it, it just gives you the determination to make sure you get it done. What makes you most proud about your work? Our team. I really think being able to pull together a phenomenal team that leads and brings ideas and they're creative and they support, they're supportive and they're the kind of people, honestly, that you would want as your best friend. So if you have that kind of leadership in your organization, then I just feel that that's success. Well, congratulations to you. And Kelly, thank you, thank you so much for sharing your, your beautiful story with us and, and for the passion for the community that you have. And thank you for all that Four Bare Feet is bringing. And I'm sure Timothy is very proud of you as he watches over you and your family. And thank you so much. Um, what's next for the brand? Moving forward, always new products, new things. Um, and one of the things right now that is front and foremost, I think on everyone's mind is obviously with the pandemic and COVID, it has propelled the entire world 15 years into the future. Ecom is um, essential and it's the new commerce of today. So we have relaunched our website, forbearfeet.com, and anyone can go there and see all of our various designs and fun things that you can do with socks and it's available to everyone and we're just super excited to be able to do that. Well, congratulations to you and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I'm Kathy Ireland.